डी और वीवर्स ऑफ पक्षी डॉट कॉम बाई गत्री फ्रॉम पांडिचेरी गुड इवनिंग लास्ट क्लास आई वॉज डिस्क्रिपिंग अबाउट द सॉलिड स्टेट सो सॉलिड कैन बी ब्रॉडली क्लासिफाइड इंटू टू टाइप वन इज अमार प्लस अनदर इज क्रिस्टल इन द क्रिस्टल कैन बी क्लासिफाइड डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द सिमेट्री एलिमेंट्स इंटरसेप्ट एंड इंटरफेशियल एंगल्स ऑल क्रिस्टल इन सॉलिड कैन बी क्लासिफाइड into seven crystal systems and 14 brevis lattices as per our high second level is considered i am concentrating only cubic lattice in cubic lattice there are three types simple cubic lattice body centered cubic lattice and face centered cubic lattice we are concentrating now so this Solids, crystalline solid can be characterized by the three parameters I have already explained: crystallographic axis, interfacial angle, and in unit intercepts. And I have already discussed this interplanar distance can be determined with the help of Weiss indices and Miller indices. Now today, let me continue the determination of Miller indices. Now, Prepa, a three-column table. With the unit cell axis at the tops of the column. This is step one. Step two, enter the intercepts of the plane with this axis in each column or multiples of A, B, or C intercepts. Step two. Step three, invert all numbers. Step four, clear fractions to obtain H, K, and L values. So this is the Four steps we have to follow to determine Miller indices. Now, next, so I am giving some three example to calculate Miller indices. The first case, I am taking two A, two B, and three C intercepts. A equal to two, B equal to two, and C equal to three. So in the first call, I am entering now two under A. I am entering two, B I am entering two, C I am entering three values. So I have to take inverse one by two, one by two. One by three. Now, for this, we take common factors. So six is the common factor. So two by six, three. Two by six, three. Three by six, two. So these are getting these three values. So hence, the Miller indices for this H K L is given by this bracket three three two plane. So this plane is called three three two plane, generally represented by D K L equal to A by root of S square plus K square plus L square. So this is the one specific example. On the three axes, it is cutting the plane. Let me take another example where only one plane, or only one axis cut, and all the two the two other axes, it is infinite. Let me give a specific example. Under this, infinity A, infinity B, and one C. So under A, infinity, it is not cutting at the or the y y x axis. And y y axis infinity, and y is the axis one. So for this, let me take one by infinity, one by infinity, and one by one. So one by infinity nothing but zero. One by infinity nothing but zero. This is one. So for this particular intercepts, the Miller indices are H K L should be given within bracket. It is called zero zero one plane. This plane is called zero zero one plane. Okay. The third example. Under this specific third example, so two y under the y y x axis minus three b y y axis and y z axis minus three c. That means under y two, under b minus three, under c minus three again. So then we have to take inverse one by two, one by minus three, one by minus three. So common factor is six. So it is three here. Minus two here, minus two here. In this case, the Miller indices are H K L is equal to within bracket three two bar and two bar. The interesting information here. If it is a negative value, then bar will be indicated over the number. So this plane three two bar two bar. This is the way we have to represent the Miller indices. Okay, next one. The negative sign. In, in the Miller indices is indicated by placing a bar and the integer. Just now I have indicated. Okay. Now the the spacing of the three planes, one zero zero plane, one one zero plane, and 
one 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 plane of simple cubic lattice are as follows. So I am giving a for simple cubic lattice this plane I want to represent. So for B one zero zero plane, how can you calculate the value? So just see here in this case. So I assume now A is the corresponding unit. So that is here x value one. Y is k zero l zero. So a by square root of one square zero square and zero square nothing but a. So for one zero zero plane in the case of simple cubic lattice, the value it is a. You can a value a maybe in unity we can assume. The next one for the plane t one one zero d one one zero. So this by apply the same way. So one one means one 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 square. Corresponding one one square in this case zero square. So if you just as they analyze this, the value will be a by root two. This is the value. A by root two is the value for um, d one one zero plane. The same way d one 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 plane, the value will be a by root three is the value for this one. The similar indices. So for d one zero zero plane a. One one zero plane a by root two. One 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 plane a by root three. This is the interesting information. Okay. Thus, for the plane, the case of simple cubic lattice, d one zero zero, d one one zero, and d one 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 plane, the value will be a is to a by root two is to a by root three. The value will be normally one is to zero point seven zero seven is to zero point five seven seven. Normally, question can be asked in IIT. This is the normal. You can have it in mind. The same way you can go. You, you can give the value for um, body centered cubic lattice and face centered cubic lattice. Also, you can give the value. Now, what are the common place observed in the simple cubic lattice? Number one, one zero zero plane, zero one zero plane, zero zero one plane. This is type one. Type two, one one zero plane, one zero one plane, zero one one plane. Is a type two and type three one 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 plane. This is commonly observed. So let me show you the the corresponding diagram. You can see. So what you are seeing now it is one zero zero plane. That means only in y x axis it is cut in. The unit you know, the crystal crystal is cut. On the three y x y y and y z axis it is infinity. So x equal to one y equal to infinity z equal to infinity. This plane will call it as one zero zero plane. The same way. What you are seeing now, it is zero one zero plane. That means in this case, along the y axis, infinity is not cutting. Only in y axis, y o y axis is cutting at infinity, and in the z axis, it is infinity. So this plane will call it as zero one zero plane. So this is the interesting information. Next. So what we are now seeing it is zero zero one plane. So o x axis infinity, o y axis infinity, and only in o z axis that is cutting the plane. That is. Plane that the crystal curve is cutting. So is that equal to one? That means so this plane will call it as zero zero one plane. And uh, lastly, but just sorry. Next we are seeing is one one zero plane. That means x axis is cutting, y axis is cutting. Only in z axis it is infinity. So this corresponding plane, we are you are seeing is called one one zero plane. What you are seeing? The same way. This is. One zero one plane. Can you follow me? So along the x-axis cutting, along the z-axis also cutting, but along the y-axis it is infinity. It is not cutting. It is infinity. So this plane we are calling it as one zero one plane. So what you are seeing here it is one zero one plane. The same way. What you are seeing now here it is zero one one plane. This plane is called zero one one plane. Along the x-axis, infinity is not cutting. Y-axis is cutting. Z-axis also cutting. So this plane is called zero one one plane. Okay. The next one is the last type. It is one 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 plane. All the three axes it is cutting. The crystal, the crystal, the unit plane is cutting all the three axes. So x-axis axis cutting. Y-axis cutting. Z-axis also cutting. Unit intercept. So kindly. So this plane is called one 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 plane. This is the interesting information. Okay, let me come far now. So to understand, let me take a sodium chloride crystal. Sodium chloride crystal, we know it is the face centered cubic lattice. So now sodium chloride has face centered cubic lattice. You know already I have already explained what is simple, what is face centered, what is body centered. In face centered, mean there are six faces. We have discussed already, 
and each face is that is the Nayata. So, along, uh, the, along the eight corners, again, face is also having that. Already explained. So, sodium chloride is a face centered cubic lattice. So, there are four units of sodium chloride in each unit cube with the atoms in the position. This is another interesting information regarding sodium chloride crystal. There are four units of sodium chloride in each unit cube with the atoms in the positions. Okay. The unit cell of sodium chloride consists of 14 chloride ions and 13 sodium ions. This is the interesting, another interesting information. 14 chloride ions and 13 sodium ions. Right. So what you are now seeing here, it is sodium chloride crystal. It is face centered cubic salt. So this is, this is nothing but sodium chloride crystal. Now go for again. So each chloride ion is surrounded by 6 sodium ions. And similarly, each sodium ion is surrounded by 6 chloride ions. This is another characteristic. Each chloride ion is surrounded by 6 sodium ions. Similarly, each sodium ion is surrounded by 6 chloride ions. Okay, that's the unit cell of sodium chloride has 4 sodium plus and 4 Cl minus ion as follows. How? Let me calculate and see. Just see here. I am calculating. So, number of sodium ion present in the crystal, sodium chloride crystal, how to calculate? There are 12 edges, the corresponding 12, each edge will be shared by 4, so 12 into 1 by 4 will get 3, and one atom at the center, so totally 4 atom in the case of sodium. The same way, number of chloride ion sodium crystal will be, there are 8 corners occupied by chlorine, so 8 into 1 by 8, nothing but one atom, and there are 6 faces, so each face will be shared by 2 atoms, so 6 into half, 3, so 1 plus 3, 4 atoms. So there are 4 sodium ion, and 4 chloride ion. So, so that is, so this is the characteristic of sodium chloride crystal. So other solid resembling sodium crystals are lithium iodide, sodium iodide, potassium chloride, rubidium fluoride, rubidium iodide and lead sulfide. These crystals are resembling in structure of sodium chloride. That is nothing but face centered cubic lattice. This is the very very interesting information you must know. Okay, let me go to the next. So now, I want to give some more information, actually kindly follow this, not given in our Samithir book, this is given only in CDSA. So to understand the complicated structure, so what we have so far, we have discussed only uh, the idea, sodium chloride crystal, what is the reason, what is the similar, we have seen, we have seen. Then just I want to give some more information regarding the structure, what is the, what is called as quadrate number, and uh, uh, that is quadrate number 2, quadrate number 4, quadrate number 6, like this it is given. So how we have to imagine, so let me explain now. So this is one dimensional closed packing. This is, I am going to explain regarding closed packing structure. So first I am discussing one dimensional closed packing. That is, this is the one dimensional. Our, I assume this is atoms or molecules. Let us take this particular atom. So near in atom, this is one, this is two. The idea here it is, there are with surrounding two atoms or it is very nearer. That means coordinate number. It is coordinated with the neighbors, two atoms, so it is coordinate number. So in one dimensional close packing, coordinate number is two. Can you follow? Right. The next one. In two dimensional close packing, two dimensional close packing, so now we we'll call it a square close packing, it's called coordinate number is four. So how to imagine now? You now take the central atom. Central atom. So the neighbor. So the coordinated neighbor, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Kindly follow. So covert nearby coordinated contacting with this particular atom or molecule is called 4. That's why coordinate number is 4 in this case. So this is possible only in two dimensional close packing. Kindly imagine. So coordinate number 4. So you must understand what is coordinate number 2, what is coordinate number 4, I am explaining. So only if you are the crystals. If you, if you see the crystalline structure of two dimensional close packing, you can think of quadrate number four I am showing now. It is called the square close packing. The same way. The same two dimensional close packing, I will give you another way to get uh, the idea of quadrate number six. Same two dimensional close packing, but slight way. It is called this hexagonal close packing. The first one is square close packing. The second one is hexagonal close packing. Kindly see here. So consider this atom center atom. So what are the neighbors coordinated to central atom is, let me call it, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, is six. So these six atoms are coordinated the central atom. That's why the coordinate number is six for this one. So the, the same two dimensional close packing, I have shown you one case that is number four. Point number four, I have shown an example. Again, second case, I have shown an example of coordinate number six here is called hexagonal close packing. That's, that is a square close packing. This is called hexagonal close packing. Can you follow? This is two dimensional close packing arrangement in the case of crystal. Okay. So I want to give one more information. That is one more is called three dimensional close packing. First one dimensional I have explained. Two dimensional I have explained. Under the two dimensional, one is four coordinate number four, another is coordinate number six I have explained. So three dimensional close packing, what way it will form? So by placing two dimensional hexagonal close packed layers, hexagonal close packed layers, one over the other, yeah, three dimensional close packing may be generated. Kindly follow. How we are three how a three dimensional close packing may be generated simply by placing two dimensional hexagonal close packed layers one over the other, a three dimensional close packing is done. So whenever a sphere of the second layer is above the void of first layer. So the second layer is above the first layer. A tetrahedral void is formed. A tetrahedral void is formed. So they have been marked as T. At other places, we'll call it as octahedral voids are formed. So let me explain this. Just see here. In this case, so here you just see this is T. And the corresponding layer, this you can call it as O. That this is T indicates the tetrahedral void, and uh, this one, that is, this one, there is, uh, this is called the octahedral void. This is the interesting information you must know. Okay, let me go for the next. Now, this is somewhat interesting you must know. Let the total number of atoms of close packed spheres be L. That is, L is the total number of atoms or molecules present in the crystal. Simple cubic or body standard or face, let us assume. Now, then, the total number of octahedral voids is nothing but same. So, total number of octahedral voids is equal to total number of atoms or molecules present there. Then, the total number of tetrahedral voids is nothing but double the total number of atoms, 2n. So this is the interesting information because if you know this information, you can calculate the crystalline structure, the type. Is it AB pattern or AB2 pattern or AB3 pattern? That, that can be identified with the help of these octahedral voids and tetrahedral voids. This is an interesting information. Anyhow, let me go with this idea. Let me go for the next one. Now, the next step, what we are entering into the X-rays and crystal structure. So crystalline structure can be determined with the help of by passing X-rays and using a suitable equation called the Bragg's equation, we can determine the interatomic distance D. The plane so far theoretically we have discussed. So we can now determine the value with help experimentally by Bragg's equation. Let me explain what is the X, that's why I am discussing under this X-rays and crystal structure. So that means crystal structure can be studied by passing X-rays. Let me give you now. This is the most important information. Kindly follow. This is not covered in the CDSC. It is covered only in Samaj. So X-rays are electromagnetic waves of very short wavelength of 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter. So X-rays is in one form of electromagnetic radiation. It's one form of electromagnetic radiation. What is the wavelength? 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter. According to crystal graphers, it is believed that atoms in crystals are regularly arranged within an interatomic distance of about 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter. So interatomic distance more or less same 10 to the power of minus centimeter like that of wavelength of the X-ray that is 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter. This is the interesting information. Okay. A scientist called Lane, a scientist suggested that crystal can be used as a three-dimensional diffraction grating. A crystal can be used as a three-dimensional diffraction grating for X-rays. And he carried out successfully an experiment using zinc sulfate crystals. So according to Lane, a scientist, a crystal can be used as a three-dimensional diffraction grating for X-rays. And he carried out successfully an experiment using zinc sulfate crystal. Okay, let me discuss what did he discover. Yes, the photograph obtained by him is known as Lane diffraction pattern. 
he took photograph of this uh, after passing x-ray through the crystal and in that photograph uh, is called nothing but a uh, learned diffraction pattern. This is very interesting historical importance. Learned diffraction pattern. Now, though learned experiment confirmed the wave nature of x-rays and also established the fact that atoms or ion in crystals are arranged in regular three-dimensional lattice, he failed to interpret the pattern. This is the very, very interesting information regarding the learned experiment. Let me repeat again. Can you follow? So by passing X-rays, learn get some information from the crystal structure. But the, from the experiment, learn confirmed that the wave nature of X-ray. He confirmed that the wave nature of X-ray he confirmed. And also, the act, atoms and ions and crystals are arranged in a regular three-dimensional pattern. It also he confirmed. But how the explanation to interpret the, the diffraction pattern he failed. So the next man only they were successful. They are called Bracks. They are two scientists. W. L. Brack and W. H. Brack only was successful in this. So they are derived in equations called Bracks equation. So let me discuss now Bracks equation. W. L. Brack and W. H. Brack derived a mathematical relation to determine the interatomic distance from X-ray diffraction pattern. Interatomic distance, that is D, H, K, L. We have discussed just now. So that D, interatomic distance, can be obtained from the crystals with the help of X-ray diffraction pattern. It was uh, identified when it discovered by Bragg's equation. Okay. According to them, unlike ordinary lights, the reflection of X-rays can take place only at certain angle. Can you follow? According to them, according to W.L. Bragg and W.H. Bragg, unlike ordinary lights, reflection of X-rays can take place only at certain angles, which are determined by the wavelength of X-rays and the distance between the planes and the crystal. This is the very, very interesting information. This is the interesting information discovered by W. L. Brack and W. S. Brack. Okay, let me give you some more information. So in order to explain this fact, so consider two beams. Consider two X-ray beams which fall on the crystal. Let me take sodium chloride crystal. So we are allowing two X-ray beam is falling on the sodium chloride crystal at a glancing angle theta as shown. I am going to show the diagram kindly follow as shown. So can you follow? So, so what you are thinking? That is here A X B A X B. This is the one. That is A X is the rays beam of X ray falling on the first layer of the sodium chloride crystal, getting reflected to X B. The same another beam C Y C Y another beam. But this is penetrating into the second layer, getting reflected into YD. It's coming out as YD. So there are three layers. First layer, second layer, and three layers we have taken for understanding. Two layer, And this distance between these two layers are called nothing but interplanar distance. That is D. So, now let me explain. Can you have it in mind? So AXB, AX is the plane that is the first beam coming and hitting in the first layer, going out in the form of XB. The second beam, CY is coming penetrating into the second layer again, getting reflecting as YD, second layer. Now, from this, in this case, theta is the angle, glancing angle. That is, the same way, this is again theta, glancing angle. The correspondingly, here, this angle is also theta, glancing angle. So, with this idea, let me go for, kindly follow. Now, I will give you information. So, Consider two beams of X-rays which fall on the crystal at a glancing. I just now have sh I've shown you. Only three planes are shown here. Only three planes I have shown there. First layer, second layer, third layer. Okay. Some of these rays will be reflected from the upper plane and the same angle theta. Okay. While some other will be absorbed and get reflected from the successive layer. In this case, I have shown you the second beam penetrating into the second layer and get reflected. I have shown you. Okay. 
What's the next? From the figure, from the diagram I have shown, we know that two waves in phase, AX and CY, are approaching the crystal and after reflection, the rays emerge out as XB and YD. I have already explained to you. Right. Now, thus, the difference in distance travelled by two rays the distance, the difference in distance traveled by two rays equal to integral number of the level length, that is n lambda. This is the very, very interesting information given by the Drax equation. So let me explain with the diagram, you can understand that. That is the difference, this, the difference in distance traveled by two rays, beam 1, beam 2. The so what is the pathway, path that is passed by the two rays? That difference is equal to integral number of wavelengths that is equal to n lambda. Let me explain now. Kindly follow. I have already explained it. Let me repeat again. Ax is the beam hitting the first layer going out to xb. That is first one with the angle of theta here, glancing angle theta. The same way this again, this also theta. Another one is, there is another ray beam, again x-ray beam, Cy coming penetrating into the second layer, again coming out as yd. Again, this now, the what is the, the path difference here? Here is, just see here, the distance moved by AX is the distance moved by the first wave, whereas CY is the distance moved by the second wave. CY is the distance moved by the second wave. What the difference now? If you draw a line perpendicular from here, so this difference, WY, and this is WY, and this difference, why is that? This is a very interesting information, kindly follow. So this WY, this Y is that is the extra path distance covered by the second beam. The first beam coming here, X, X, B. But the second beam, C, Y, when it is coming to C, Y, W, Y is the extra distance it moved. The same way, when it move over here, that is again, Y is it is again extra or is the distance moved here. So the interesting, this is the corresponding perpendicular beam. So this difference, W1 and Y is that it is the path difference between the first beam and second beam. So with this, this is according to Bragg's equation, this path difference, W1 plus Y is that is equal to integral multiple of the wave number that is L lambda. So let me explain. Now just see the equation. The path difference I have already explained. W, Y and Y, Z, I have just now explained. It is equal to N lambda. Where the lambda is the corresponding wavelength of the X-ray we are using. N is an integer. Okay. Now, what is N lambda? So now let me use now. That is X, Y sin theta plus X, Y sin theta. Let me explain with this diagram. You can remember. Now in this, if you take a try a perpendicular line here, here also try a perpendicular line. So correspondingly, this will be theta, this will be theta. So what I can now write, Wy here, it is nothing but, it is xy sin theta, the first case. If you consider this triangle, xy sin theta, same way, if you consider this one, again, the xy is that if you consider, that is, now we can call it as y is that that is equal to, again, xy sin theta. This is the interesting information. So, WY, this path difference is equal to XY sin theta. XY is the line drawn perpendicular. The same, if you consider triangle XY is that again, Y is that path difference equal to XY sin theta. So, both XY sin theta, nothing but 2 XY sin theta. Just see here. So, that means XY sin theta and XY sin theta, just now I explained. So, what is XY? Nothing but, so instead of XY, nothing but D. So instead of xy I substitute now, it is n lambda equal to 2d sin theta. This is the very, very famous Bragg's equation. n lambda equal to 2d sin theta. Theta, the glancing angle, experimentally we are fixing. d, interval and our distance. So by using a characteristic x-ray lambda, we know the lambda value. And we, do, we know the glancing angle theta. So, the experimentally, now we can determine the d value, interplanar distance. This is the very, very interesting information we are getting from Bragg's equation. Can you follow? This is the very interesting information we can get from this. So, with this, now let me go for the next one. So, so far I have discussed that is, learn the scientists 
have, give, have only tried first with the x-ray and he only suggested the by taking diffraction pattern crystals are arranged, atoms and ions are arranged in three dimensional order and the x-ray is having a wave of nature so he, has take, he, he took a photograph of the diffraction pattern but he failed to explain the interpretation he failed to give interpretation but the Bragg's they have given, succeeded in this and have derived an equation from the equation they have determined that they are able to calculate D that is the interplanar distance. This is the interesting information. Let me go for defects of crystal. This is the another interesting information. Okay, let me go for the next. The defects of crystal I can classify into broadly two types. One is point defects, another is line defects. Can you follow? So, a defects of crystal. What is the defect present in the crystal? I can classify one is point defect, another is line defects. So, coming for point defects, let me explain. What is point defects? Point defects are irregularities or deviations from ideal arrangement around a point or an atom in the crystalline substance. This is called point defect. Let me repeat again. Point defects are the irregularities or deviations from ideal arrangement around a point or an atom in a crystalline substance. This is called a point defects. The next one. What is the line defects? Line defects are the irregularities or deviations from ideal arrangement in the entire rows of lattice points. Entire rows of lattice points. This is called line defects. These irregularities are called crystal defects. These irregularities are called crystal defects. That is called crystal defects. Kindly understand. Okay. Now here in this, in my discussion, so I will confine the discussion to point defects only here. I am not con I am concentrating on line defects. So I am concentrating only on point defect. Kindly follow me. So types of Point defects. So, point defects, I have already said this is nothing but crystal defects. Even though light defects and point defects, we are concentrating only on point defects. So, for the point defects, further I can classify into three types. Number one, stoichiometric defect, kindly follow. Stoichiometric defect. Number two, impurity defects. Number three, non stoichiometric defects. So, point defects, there are defects in the crystals. Two types, one is point defect and the line defects. But we are concentrating only on point defects. So, these among the point defects, there are three types of point defects. One is stoichiometric defect, another is impurity defect, and third is non stoichiometric defect. So, this is the very interesting information. Now, let me take first one stoichiometric defect. Stoichiometric means you know it's stoichiometric equation. It is stoichiometric These defects, stoichiometric defect, do not disturb that the stoichiometry of the solid. So, that is when we are writing a formula A, B, A, B, 2, A, B, 3, like this pattern. So, these defects do not, it will not disturb the stoichiometry of the solid. This is the industry, you call it a stoichiometric defect. They are also called intrinsic or thermodynamic defects. So, stoichiometric defects is also known as intrinsic defect or thermodynamic defect. Can you follow? This is the interesting thing. Okay. Basically, so again, stoichiometric defect can be also can be classified into two types. Can you follow? So, the stoichiometric defect, again further we can classify into two types, namely, one is vacancy defect, another is interstitial defect. Very, very interesting. So, the under this stoichiometric defect, again we are getting two types. One is vacancy defect, another is interstitial defects. So, let me go in detail, kindly. First, let me take vacancy defect. Vacancy means already you know that is any atom or ion, it is missing. That is called a vacancy defect. Okay, now, when some of the lattice sites are vacant, some of the vacants, the, the, some of the lattice sites are vacant, the crystal is said to have vacancy. Very, very clear. Suppose you take sodium chloride phase under the cube. 
or simple cubic or body centered cubic, whatever it is. So ions or atoms are arranged. And any atom or any ion is missing in this site, in the particular vacuum, that is vacuum, that particular defect will cause the vacuum. It's very, very simple. Okay. Now, this defect can also develop when a substance is heated. This is the interesting information. When you heat a substance, what will happen now? The atom or ion occupied in a particular site will be moved away from the particular place, leaving a vacuum. So this vacuum is arises due to heating also. Okay. So due to this defect, the solid will have low density. This is the interesting information. So in vacancy defect, the normally solid will have low density comparatively. How? Density. What is density? Density equal to mass by volume. Mass by volume. So mass means the total atom we have not taken into consideration. So volume is same, but in the atoms, one or two atoms or ions are missing, mean mass will less. Mass less means correspondingly density will be low. This is the interesting information. So generally in vacancy, due to vacancy defect, the, the solid will have low density. So what we are seeing, I am giving that is um, that is arrangement of the atom here. So I am indicating a square, it is indicating it's a vacant, the atom is vacant. Here that the square indicating atom is vacant. So this is a regular arrangement. In this two, that, that is a, a two times regular arrangement. So the, in two places I have shown the square indicating it is a vacant. This is a specific example. If you consider the entire atom is sodium or whatever it is, so correspondingly a particular atom is vacant. This is a specific example of vacancy defined. Okay, now. Next is interstitial defect. First one is vacancy defect. I have already explained one atom or ion is vacant. Interstitial defects. What is interstitial? When some constituent particles, it may be atoms, it may be molecules, or even ions, occupy an interstitial site. Interstitial means between atoms. Interstitial site. The crystal is said to have interstitial defect. Kind of follow. When some constituent particle atoms or molecule occupy an interstitial site, the crystal is said to have interstitial defect. This defect increases the density of substance because this is extra atom is added inside. And when extra atom is added, automatically density of the substance will increase. Kind of follow. The main difference between the vacancy defect and interstitial defect. In vacancy, the solid will have that is corresponding low density. In interstitial, extra atom is added because so it will be it will increase the density. This is the most important difference between vacancy defect and interstitial defect. Can you follow? Okay. Now another most important information: vacancy and interstitial defect can be shown by non-ionic solid. Very very interesting information I am giving. Non-ionic solids. Non-ionic solid means it will be non-polar molecule crystals. So if it is so, the vacancy and interstitial defect can be shown by non-ionic solid generally. This is the interesting information I want to record. Okay, next one. Another interesting. Ionic solid also will show this defect. Ionic solid also will show the defect, but in that case we are giving a special name. One is called Frankel, another is called the Scott Q defect. So, if these defects, vacancy and interstitial defects are observed in polar molecules, the corresponding ionic solid, polar solids, ionic solids, these defects we are not calling it as vacancy defect or interstitial defect. Instead of that, we are using a different name. The name is Frankel defect, another is Scott Q defect. Kindly follow me. So that what I am now showing is, is an example. I am showing. Just see this atom. It is inserted between the regular arrangement. So extra atom is added in the. It's called interstitial. Interstitial. This is interesting information. So let me explain now. What is Frankel and what is Kolmogorov? If I can explain with a suitable example. Kindly follow. So first case I have shown you vacancy means. Among the regular arrangement, one atom or one molecule is missing, so density will be low. The second case, interstitial, this one atom or one molecule will be extra, so density will be higher. 
So this is normally generally present in the non-ionic solid. But in the case of ionic solid, this vacancy and interstitial defect will be possible. In that case, instead of simply saying vacancy defect or interstitial defect, we are using a special name, Frank and Schwarzschild defect. That is the first one. So let me take first Frankel defect. What is Frankel defect? Frankel defect is shown by ionic solid. Just now I have discussed. It is shown by ionic solid. Okay. It is also known as Dislocation defect, kindly follow. Dislocation defect. Normal location is called a dislocation opposite. Okay. Now, if it does not change the density of the solid, kindly follow. I very, very interesting. It does not change the density of solid. First two, two cases, I have explained ordinary non ionic solid. I have explained one case low density, another case high density. But in the case of Frankel defect, it does not change the density of the solid. This is a very, very interesting information. In Frankel defect, density of the solid will not change. Okay. Frankel defect is normally shown by ionic substance in which the in which this a large difference in the size of the ion usually cations. Can you follow? This is a very, very interesting information. The idea here it is, if you compare the size of the cation, size of the anion, if the, the, the size difference between cation and anion is larger, the corresponding fractal defect will occur. Specifically, the size of the, the cation will be very very small when compared to size of the anion, normally fractal defect will absorb. Specific example, I will say zinc sulfide, silver chloride, Silver bromide, silver iodide, due to small size of zinc 2 plus and small size of Ag plus ion. Kindly follow. This is the very, very interesting information. So, by seeing the molecular formula of the crystal correspondingly, we can assign whether fractal defect is possible or not. Because if the size of the anion and cations are different, is larger. And specifically, if the size of the cation is smaller when compared to size of the anion, normally Frankel defect will be observed. This is a very, very interesting information. Keep it in your mind. Okay, let me go first. Next. Now, the smaller cation, kindly follow, is dislocated from its normal side to an interstitial side. Kindly follow. So, because the size of the cation is smaller, then it will. Um, that is move from one place, keeping vacant, and move it to the interstitial portion between atoms. Just see here, a specific example here, the one plus, the positive ion, it is moving inside. Interstitially it is moved. So smaller cations look dislocated from its normal side to an interstitial side. So from any one of these positive sides, it will move and occupy this. So automatically when it is moving from here to here, this will be vacant. This side will be vacant. Kindly follow. This is the interesting information. So it can move from any place. So if normal arrangement with cation will be there, and the cation, if it moves from its original position to an interstitial position, that position will be vacant. So automatically density will not change. So this defect. So how this is possible? This is possible only the cation is smaller and ion is larger. Kindly follow. This is the interesting. This is called actually fractal defect. Okay, let me go to the next. Now, next let me go for Skorsky defects. Under the Skorsky defects, now it is basically a vacancy defect in ionic solids. So, Skorsky defect is basically a vacancy defect in ionic solids. In order to maintain electrically neutrality, the number of missing cations and anions are equal. This is the most important. So, Skarsky defect is nothing but a vacancy defect. Can you follow? Vacancy defect in ionic solids. In order to maintain electrical neutrality, the number of missing cations and anions are equal. This is the interesting information in Skarsky defect. Okay. Just see what you are seeing here. So, here one positive is missing. Here one negative is missing. Can you follow? So, total is balanced. So this defect is called Skarsky defect. Can you follow? Positive ion, negative ion, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, alternatively it is arranged. But here it is called, that is, here a positive is vacant, 
here your negative is vacant. So this defect we will call it as Scott key defect. Kind of follow. This is the interesting information. Okay. Now, like simple vacancy defect, Scott key defect also decreases the density of the solid substance because two at positive and negative atom missing. So when they are missing, automatically density mass will be less. Correspondingly, density will be low. This is the very interesting atom. Like simple vacancy defined, Scott key defect also decreases the density of solid substance. This is a solid proof. Okay. For example, in sodium chloride, face centered cubic lattice, there are approximately 10 to the power of 6 Scott key pairs per centimeter cube at room temperature. Right. In 1 centimeter cube, there are about 10 to the power of 22 ions. Thus, there is one Scott key defect per 10 to the power of 16 ions. This is simple calculation given in the textbook. So, this is just again, it's not necessary for you to remember. That's the information I am giving. The interesting point here it is like simple vacancy defect, Scott key defect also decreases the density of the solid substance. This is interesting information you must know. Okay, let me go for the next. So, Scott's key defects is shown by ionic substances. Just now we are shown. So both Frankel and Scott key defects shown by ionic substances. Okay. So now the question is, in which case Scott key defect will be there? The, the Scott key defect shown by ionic substances in which the cation and anion are almost similar sizes. Kindly follow. This is the interesting information. Because in Frankel defect we have seen already, the size of the cation will be smaller, size of the anion will be larger. So it is interstitial. One cation moved from the side to the interstitial place. It is Frankel. But in the case of Scott Key, the cation is size and anion is almost similar size. Only in that particular pattern that is this defect arises. Okay. For example, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, cesium chloride, and silver bromide. Can you follow? The silver bromide I am introducing. So when I am introducing silver bromide, I am giving I want to give one more information, interesting information. That is. It must be noted that silver bromide shows both the Frankel as well as Scott's key defect. So this will be asked in normally competitive examinations. So silver bromide shows both the Frankel as well as Scott's key defect. One is will, will occupy interstitial or it may be even vacuum. Uh, that is the interesting information. Okay. Second number two, impurity defect. Due to some impurity, presence of foreign ion. That we will call it as impurity defect. So, if sodium chloride is crystallized in presence of little impurity strontium chloride, some of the sites of sodium plus ions are occupied by yes, that is strontium 2 plus. So, when sodium chloride is crystallized in presence of little strontium chloride solid, impurity is present, the sum of the sites of sodium ion will be occupied by yes, or, uh, strontium 2 plus. So what will happen? If it is occupied, what will happen? Each strontium 2 plus replaces so 2 sodium ion because the valence of sodium is 2, 1 plus strontium is 2. So in order to balance, so what will happen now? 2 sodium atom will be replaced by 1 strontium atom. The corresponding strontium 2 plus. So because of what will happen now? Now it occupies the site of one ion and the other side remains vacant. This is the interesting information. Kindly follow impurity. This is the interesting impurity the coming under the impurity defects. So when sodium chloride is crystallized in presence of sanchen chloride, the sum of the sites of sodium ions are occupied by sanchen ion, sanchen 2 plus ion. So normally when, 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 when one sanchen 2 plus ion is going, up, going and occupying, mean it will occupy two sodium atom, two site of two sodium ion. So it will occupy only one sodium place, another place will be vacant. This is the interesting information regarding impurity defect. Okay, let me come forward. So under the same way, another similar example is the solid fill ignore. Cadmium chloride and silver chloride is a similar example. This is another example. One is sodium chloride, crystallization of sodium chloride presence of sanction chloride. Another is crystallization of cadmium chloride presence of silver chloride is a two page big example. Here what I have shown is sodium chloride impurity defect due to sodium chloride in presence of sanction chloride. Kindly see here. In this case, sodium plus Cl minus, sodium plus Cl minus, alternative arrangement. Here Cl minus, 
plus here instead of sodium plus the strontium 2 plus occupying again negative positive so because it's occupying a place of sodium another in place of here the sodium atom instead of sodium atom it is kept vacant this is called impurity defined so two sodium atom site is vacant but one of the site is strontium 2 plus is occupying another place of the vacant place of sodium is kept vacant this is the interesting information regarding for impurity defined try to follow let me go to the next one so, so far what I have discussed is the impurity defect. Let me go for the next one. Third time, non-stoichiometric defect. This is another interesting information. Non-stoichiometric defect. These defects disturb the stoichiometry of the solid. So, there are two types among these. One is metal excess defect, metal deficiency, deficiency defect. So, among the non stoichiometric defects, there are two types. One is due to metal excess defect, another is due to metal deficiency defect. Let me discuss these two defects. Now, when crystals of sodium chloride are heated in an atmosphere of sodium vapor, sodium atoms are deposited on the surface of the crystal. Sodium atoms are deposited on the surface of the crystal. The chloride ion diffuses to the surface of the crystal and combines with sodium atom to form sodium ion. Okay. The released electrons, so when they are combining, electron will be released. The released electron diffuses into the crystal and occupy anionic sites. So wherever it is anion, instead of anion, this negative sign will go there. So as a result, the crystal now has excess of sodium. This is the interesting thing. Excess of sodium will be there. Okay, the next one. Metal excess defect. Can you let me continue further. The anionic sites occupied by the unpaired electrons are called F center. Kindly follow. This is the interesting information. The anionic sites occupied by unpaired electrons are called F centers. From the German word that is correspondingly Perven center for color center. The German word. It's a due to color. Okay, so in this case, they impact yellow color to the crystals of sodium chloride. Sodium color becomes yellow. It is only because of this. How the sodium color when you uh, when you heat this, the sodium color becomes uh, yellow because the color result by excitation of these electrons when they absorb energy from the visible light falling on the crystals. So this is the interesting information. Okay, what you are now you can see this is called F centers. What is happening here? Kindly follow. The electron released from the corresponding sodium will occupy instead of the chlorine atom. In place of chlorine atom, it is occupying extra electron. So, probably if you count the total number, sodium will be higher in, higher in number compared to chlorine. So, this electron now, this type of the, uh, of the this is called F center. This, this type is called F center. This is coming under the non stoichiometric defect. Kind of follow. Okay. The next one. Mental excess defect due to anionic excess. Similarly, so one case I have discussed with the sodium chloride. Similarly, excess of lithium makes lithium chloride crystal pink. So when you, again, same way, excess of lithium makes lithium chloride crystal pink, and the excess of potassium makes potassium chloride, chloride crystal violet. So sodium chloride yellow, lithium chloride pink. And the potassium chloride is violet, so it is due to the release of electron occupying the, the corresponding negative ion site. Okay, the metal excess defect due to the presence of extra cations at the intersexual sites. This is the interesting information. Okay, now zinc oxide is a white color at room temperature. On heating, it loses oxygen and turns yellow. This is the interesting information I want to record. Right. Now, metal excess defect due to anion magnetic will continue now. Now, there is excess of zinc in the crystal and its formula becomes Zn to the power, that is to this, uh, uh, to that is 1 plus Ex, the correspondingly oxygen. That ratio, the amount of zinc is 1 plus X. The excess zinc ions move to the intersexual sites and the electron to the neighboring intersexual sites. This is the interesting information. Okay, let me give up. The next effect is metal deficiency defect. First, so far what I have discussed, metal excess defect. But now I am going to discuss metal deficiency defect under the non-stoichiometric defect. 
FeO peroxide is the specific example. Here, metal deficiency, metal deficiency defect is observed. Thus, there are many solids which are difficult to prepare in the stoichiometry composition and contain less amount of metal as compared to the stoichiometry proportion. This is the interesting information. So, thus, FeO peroxide is actually found from Fe 0.93 oxygen to Fe 0.96O. Instead of ratio 1 is to 1 ratio, the, the ratio of ion atom will be less than 1. So, what is the ratio? It will be 0 0.93 to 0 0.96. So, always the correspondingly in this case. So, the composition amount of metals compared to the socket proportion will be compared to less compared to the non metal in this case. Now, the last one. That is, let me give you some more information under the metal In crystals of FeO, FeO, peroxide, some Fe2 plus cations, Fe2 plus cation are missing. And the loss of positive charge is made up by the presence of required number of Fe3 plus ion. So wherever that Fe2 plus is missing there, that will be the made up by the presence of required number of Fe3 plus ion. This is now metal deficiency effect. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture. Thank you.